Determine the magnitude of force F so that the resultant force of the three forces is as small as possible and find what is the resultant force. The first step in solving an engineering problem is to read the problem. The second is to draw a picture. We have three forces of interest here. The 14 kilonewton load at 30 degrees above the negative x-axis. The F force which is at 45 degrees to the positive, but it's pointing down and to the left. Make sure you take notice of where the head and the arrow is. And you have an 8 kilonewton load that's pointing to the right, straight along the x-axis. So these are our three forces. Now, once you've drawn a picture, the second thing to do, or third thing in solving an engineering problem, is to write down what you're given. You have three forces. Vector A has a magnitude of 14 kilonewtons, vector B has a magnitude of 8 kilonewtons, you have a vector F, and now we know that we want the resultant force of the three. And we're going to want that resultant to be as small as possible. So let's write that down. So the resultant is the sum of the three forces. We want it to be as small as possible, and we're going to try to find that resultant. Once you know what you're given and you know what you're looking for, the next thing to do is to write down your steps. So find each of your forces and add them up. The easiest way to add three forces is to have each of them in Cartesian form. So change each of these forces, A, B, and F, to Cartesian form. Vector A is 14 cosine 30 in the negative I direction, plus 14 sine 30 in the positive J direction. Your triangle looks like this, where this is 30 degrees, and that is the negative I direction, so make sure you're being careful with your signs. Vector B is easy, of course, that's just 8 in the positive I direction. Vector F is F cosine 45, also in the negative I direction, and F sine 45 in the negative J direction. This is down and to the left, so both of the components have to be negative. To find the resultant of these three forces, all we have to do is add up the i's and add up the j's. Once we've added up the i's and added up the j's, let's call this rx in the i direction plus ry in the j direction for simplicity's sake for a moment. Think about this for a second. What are you looking for? You want to know what the resultant, how to make the resultant force as small as possible. What does it mean to make a vector as small as possible? What we need to do is we need to make the resultant as small as possible. How do I know that we need to make the, the, res, the magnitude of the resultant as small as possible? It doesn't make any sense to minimize a direction. The direction is what it is. So if a vector is just magnitude and direction, what we need to do is minimize the magnitude. Let's find the magnitude of r. Once we have the magnitude of r, we want to find its minimum. Now remember from calculus, if you have a function, some sort of f of x, and you want to find out where it is, at what x it is a minimum, you take the derivative of x and set it equal to zero. What we have here, our function, is the magnitude of f, the magnitude of r. And r, what's changing in our magnitude of r is f. So what we want to do is we want to take the derivative of the magnitude of r with respect to f. This is what we want to change. We want to find the minimum value of the magnitude of r as we change f. So this is the derivative we need to take. We need to set this equal to 0. That lets us know what the critical points are. As we're going to solve this by hand, we can take a math shortcut that will make our lives a little bit easier. But before we do that, let's look at what this derivative actually is. We need to use the chain rule here. The magnitude of r is rx squared plus ry squared to the one-half power. So the derivative of the magnitude of r with respect to f starts by the chain rule bring down the one-half, and then you have what's inside the square root, rx squared plus ry squared, to the negative one-half power, 
and the derivative of what's inside. So we have 2rx times the derivative of rx with respect to f plus 2ry times the derivative of ry with respect to f. And this is what we want to set equal to 0. Now here's a nice shortcut. If you have any two things that are multiplied together, a times b equals 0, either a equals 0 or b equals 0, this part of the derivative has the form of 1 over the square root of something. This is never going to be equal to 0. So to solve this, all we have to do is set this other part equal to 0. 2rx times the derivative of rx with respect to f plus 2ry times the derivative of ry with respect to f. Set that equal to 0. Remember, this is going to give us the, the critical points of our function. And the critical points of our function are the minimum. We're minimizing the magnitude of r with respect to f. Plug our values for rx and ry back into this function. And as you do that, you can notice that the derivative of rx with respect to f is just minus cosine 45, and the derivative of ry with respect to f is just minus sine 45. At this point, you can pull out your calculator and punch in all the things that you know numbers for, and what you end up with simplifies to f equals 2.03 kilonewtons. Always remember to go back and see if you've answered the question. We have answered the question, what is the magnitude of f such that the resultant is as small as possible? But we haven't answered the question, what is the resultant force? To find the magnitude of the resultant force, plug this value of f back into our function here for the magnitude of r. The magnitude of r is 7.87 kilonewtons. If you plug this value of f into the Cartesian form for r, you can show that r has to be minus 5.56i plus 5.56j. Because the i and j components are exactly the same, what you have here is r at a 45 degree angle to the x-axis. Now note that f is also at a 45 degree axis to the x-axis, 45 degree angle to the x-axis. It would be nice if every time you wanted to minimize something you could say, I'm going to set this resultant equal to zero. But as you can see here, you can't ever get that resultant equal to zero. The smallest you can get it is 7.87 kilonewtons. And that's because even if you could minimize every single resultant value along the positive 45 degree line, there is always going to be some component along the negative 45 degree line due to the fact that these three, ang these three forces are already at fixed angles. If you wanted to also allow F to change its angle, then you could minimize F all the way down to, minimize the resultant all the way down to zero. But as it is with a fixed angle for the vector F, the resultant can never be smaller than 7.87 kilonewtons.